Hello everyone. So as you may be aware, a while back I made a few videos about the YouTube channel CinemaSins laying out various mistakes they've made and criticising their general approach to movie criticism. A response to those videos has been uniformly positive. Uh, YouTube users are still leaving me plenty of supportive messages on those videos. Uh, for example, Patrick Harris says, Thanks for the video. Like many CinemaSins viewers, I had previously not understood the word satire, but after watching your videos, I now realise that I was using it incorrectly, and CinemaSins is not in fact satirical. Another commenter says, Keep up the good work. I can't believe CinemaSins conditioned me into laughing at their repetitive, unfunny jokes. A humorous intent is no defence if the joke unfairly denigrates other people's hard work through deception and falsehood. And John Doe says, Oh, I get it. CinemaSins watches movies and finds things in them to nitpick, and you did the same thing to their videos. That's very clever. Um, although I'm not a fan of yours, attaching my ego to a clickbait YouTube channel would be ridiculous, and thus I will not get mad at you and leave you a nasty message. Anyway, after making those videos, I did the sensible thing and stopped watching CinemaSins entirely uh, for more than a year and it was wonderful. I've never known such peace, to be honest. It's been the best year of my life so far. Um, however, recently a friend linked me to this video, Everything Wrong with Blade Runner in 17 Minutes or Less, put out by CinemaSins to coincide with the release of the recent Blade Runner sequel. And I thought, oh, go on then. You know, I can handle just one. It's been a while. Maybe they aren't as bad as I remember. Maybe I was exaggerating back then. So I gave it a watch, and I saw this. Uh, CinemaSins gave Blade Runner a sin for being, quote, super advanced and super dilapidated all at the same time. You know, like it's a mistake. Oh, God. I'm even getting mad looking at it right now. Now, Blade Runner is, of course, a cyberpunk film, and the juxtaposition of advanced technology and societal problems, like inequality, uh, is by design. You know, rather than technology leading to a utopian post-scarcity future, films and other works of art in this subgenre typically ask, what if technology keeps advancing, but we're unable to solve our various societal problems? You know, what if we still have things like inequality, class divides, crime, police, slavery, and all that, you know, how will the advance of technology interact with and even possibly exacerbate those problems? A Blade Runner being set in a future that is super advanced and super dilapidated at the same time it is the whole point, a point that is completely missed by CinemaSins, who give the movie a sin and ding it as if it were a mistake akin to the boom mic showing in the shot or something. Anyway, after thinking about this sin for about four seconds, I realised I was going to have to make another CinemaSins video. Uh, but then I thought, skipping all the way to the present day wouldn't really be right, would it? CinemaSins have put out over a hundred videos in the past year, and I bet they've made some really gratuitous mistakes in those. So that's what we're going to do today. Pick up where we left off with CinemaSins and catalogue just a portion of everything they've got wrong in the past year. Let's show them how to nitpick properly. And let's start off with a sin from their video on the movie 10 Cloverfield Lane. You're the only one small enough to reach it. Reach what? The filtration system. This guy is the king of overpreparedness for disasters, and did not know this girl or anyone other than him would be down here when he built this shelter, but still made the air filtration system accessible to only people one-fifth his size. So why would John Goodman's character build an air filtration system that he was unable to access? What a buffoon he is, eh? Uh, but let's take a peek at the movie real quick. What's up there? Air filtration system. I can't... Something blocking the hatch. Ah, you see, he could reach it, but something was blocking the hatch. And why would something be blocking the hatch? Well, a minute earlier in the movie, a then unknown force caused the bunker to shake, and that damaged the air filtration system and blocked the hatch to it. Also, here when CinemaSins say that John Goodman's character Howard didn't know that anyone else would be down here with him, that's not true either. 
as there are various clues in the bunker pointing to the fact that Howard had previously kept someone else there, such as the word help scratched into the glass on the inside of the exit hatch. I also like this sin from later in the video, where CinemaSins call a Molotov cocktail a makeshift Molotov cocktail, you know, as opposed to the official line of Molotov cocktails that you'd buy in the store, I guess. In their video for The Rock, CinemaSins call these helicopters Black Hawk helicopters, but they're not. Uh, this is a Black Hawk helicopter, which, as you can see, doesn't really look anything like what they showed, you know, beyond being a helicopter. Let's take a look at a scene from Star Trek Free: The Search for Spock. There are your life forms. These were microbes on the tube surface. Microbes, by their very definition, are microscopic living organisms. I hate to be nitpicky, but these seem way more visible without a microscope than usual. Uh, well, I love to be nitpicky, and the line was, they were microbes in the past tense, implying that they are no longer microbes, and indeed, if we look at the movie... These were microbes on the tube surface. We shot them here from Enterprise. They were fruitful and multiplied. But how could they have evolved so quickly? Let's take a look at a sin from their video for the movie The Born Supremacy now, from near the end of the movie. Somehow, with all these witnesses, Born still escapes into the ether after this. So a lot of witnesses saw Born after his car crash in the tunnel, so how did he possibly escape? And you might be wondering, well, what's wrong with this? Well, let's now watch a sin from the start of their video for the next movie in the series, The Born Ultimatum, which continues the story after this car crash. So the Moscow police are coming after Bourne because of that tunnel chase scene from the last movie. How the f*** did Bourne get spotted in the first place? And how was he identified by anyone in that dark-ass tunnel? And that's unbelievable, isn't it? How did Bourne get away with all these witnesses there? And then the next movie, how did any of those witnesses see Bourne in that dark tunnel? Shameful. Uh, these videos came out only two days apart, by the way. Uh, similar to that, let's look at a sin from their video about Ghost in the Shell. Earlier we saw that the Major is heavy and dense enough to bend a metal roof tile, but here she's buoyant enough to float on water instead of sinking like a rock. So how can the Major float when she's so heavy? Well, the shot CinemaSins use is taken from the end of the diving scene after we've already seen the flotation device on the Major's back carry her to the surface. CinemaSins neglect to show that, obviously. What they also don't mention here is the following conversation on the boat, where Bato talks to the Major about how dangerous it is for cyborgs to go swimming, and specifically mentions the Major's flotation equipment. You know, how did CinemaSins miss this scene? Well, it turns out, they didn't. Major is swimming in this scene, much like she does in the original. Only, the original brings up how dangerous it is for cybernetic humans to go deep in the water like this, because, you know, they're made of heavy machinery. But this movie doesn't mention it once, since this scene's compressed so much it feels like it's in GIF format. So, CinemaSins did see that scene. They must have, in order to use it to criticise the live-action remake, and that's pretty shady, isn't it? This just confirms my suspicions that CinemaSins write their scripts while watching the movie for the first time, and don't go back to do any editing when the movie provides them with additional information that proves them wrong. At the start of their video for Citizen Kane... Citizen Kane... Uh, they call these gondolas Viking canoes, and then go on to say this. Rich Guy's castle has a drivable par 4 on hole 16, just so he can feel good about himself toward the end of the round. A drivable par 4 at 365 yards. Well, that seemed a little off to me, so I went to check and found a page on golfweek.com that lists the average PGA Tour driving distances for recent years, and they have never averaged over 300 yards. And they're professional golfers, so is this a drivable par 4? Well, maybe for about 30 people on the planet, but that's it. And I'd like to thank CinemaSins for getting two obvious things wrong in the first minute of their video about Citizen Kane, so that I didn't have to force myself to watch the rest of it. Uh, from Citizen Kane to the Lego Batman movie now. This is where the movie loses me and starts to just be noise. Tossing in the Wicked Witch from Wizard of Oz, Sauron, Gremlins, Agents from the Matrix, King Kong, Voldemort, Daleks... Daleks. Daleks. What's that? Oh, it's a Dalek, isn't it? Incredible. Uh, in their video about Blade, they criticise the distance between the bite marks of the, quote, vampire incisors. Uh, but vampires are usually depicted not with sharp incisors, but with sharp canines, as indeed they are in Blade. That's a canine right there. 
In their video for the Jungle Book remake, CinemaSins call Shere Khan a quote, African tiger, which is odd both because the Jungle Book is set in India uh, and African tigers don't exist. Uh, CinemaSins still don't know too much about animals, I see. Let's do a few more animal examples here. Uh, starting with their video for Saw 2, where they say that this person is wearing a horse mask. That's a horse snout there, I guess. Um, in their video for Pocahontas, they call this raccoon a rodent, uh, but raccoons aren't rodents. In Finding Dory, they think that the octopus character's camouflage automatically blends in with the background, uh, but this is not the case. In reality, the Mimic Octopus, for example, is able to control its camouflage ability at will, not only to blend in with its surroundings, but also to mimic other animals. And in their video for the movie Split, they call these mice gerbils. So where does one learn about animals? Because CinemaSins need to go and be there. In their video for Shrek, they say that the DreamWorks logo has two letter E's in it. Um, and I'm not too sure about this, to be honest. I mean, I, I see the first one, sure, between the R and the A there. I'm with them on that, but after that, I'm lost, I'm afraid. In How to Train Your Dragon 2, they refer to a character called Dobber. Uh, however, there isn't a character called Dobber in this movie. Uh, there's a character called Gobber, so I'd guess they meant him. It's probably a safe bet. Uh, similar to that, in Jack Reacher, they refer to a character named Stacy. However, there is no character called Stacy in Jack Reacher. Who is Stacy, Cinema Sins? I have no idea. Uh, watch the following sin from Captain America Civil War. What was her name again? Dolores. You called her Doc. Steve remembers the name of some random redhead Bucky tried to impress more than 70 years ago. How can Captain America remember things that happened 70 years ago? Well, if you remember, Cinema Sins, Captain America fell into a coma sometime in the Second World War and woke up in the present day, so for him, consciously, it's a relatively recent event. Uh, let's do another superhero one, uh, this from early in their video for Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. All it takes to get the most precious element on Earth is a couple freedivers with a motorboat and a dream. Is it ever explained how this Kryptonian vessel full of kryptonite crash landed in the Indian f***ing ocean? Uh, so that's some people finding kryptonite in the Indian Ocean there. That's odd, isn't it? Where did that come from? Uh, well, if you recall CinemaSins, uh, there was a movie called Man of Steel, which I know you've seen because you did a video about it, in which the plan of the antagonist in that movie was to terraform the Earth into a new krypton using a large terraforming machine located above the Indian Ocean. And that's how the kryptonite got there. It was the big Kryptonian terraforming machine from the previous movie in the series. And there's even an establishing shot of it earlier in the movie, and CinemaSins used that in their video. Uh, look at this following nonsense from their video about Gone Girl. The morning of what? The morning of what? Yeah, yeah, we know it means this is the morning of her disappearance, but won't her disappearance tell us that? The morning of what? The morning of July 5th. It says it right there on the screen. Uh, next movie, let's do The Conjuring 2. So okay, at the start of this movie, a character relives the events of November 13th, 1974, when Ronald DeFeo Jr. shot and killed six members of his family in Amityville. Uh, CinemaSins criticized the movie for showing the family sleeping through the gunshots, but this is actually faithful to the account of the case. Police were puzzled by the fact that nobody appeared to have gotten out of bed to investigate the gunshots, as all the victims were found face down in bed. So plus one to the movie for accuracy, I guess. Uh, but that's not what I want to talk about here. I want to talk about this sin. Movie proves Vera Farmiga has a way better imaginary dream shotgun than you do. A dream shotgun. Hey, well you see, the murders were actually carried out with a lever action rifle, not a shotgun. And is that unfair of me? You know, criticizing CinemaSins for not recognizing an invisible gun. Well, no, because later in that scene, the character experiencing the vision walks in front of a mirror and the rifle is briefly visible. And I know CinemaSins saw it because they featured it in a sin. So, nah. In their video about I Am Legend, CinemaSins say the following. The viral zombie apocalypse somehow destroyed two thirds of all the most famous bridges in New York. The bridges were destroyed somehow. I wonder how. Any ideas, movie? Uh, 
That's right, the military destroyed the bridges. How did CinemaSins miss that? Well, they give the movie a sin for having the broken bridges at about 25 minutes into the movie, and the bridges aren't shown being blown up until a flashback that happens over 30 minutes later. CinemaSins just didn't go back to edit the bridge sin out when they were shown to be wrong, because they're lazy and their videos are bad. Uh, this next sin is from their video for the movie Krampus. Back when Howard handed Tom this gun, he didn't give him any more ammo. And when Howard got attacked by the gopher from Caddyshack, Tom fired off two rounds. So where the hell did these extra rounds come from? Uh, well, that's because revolvers don't auto-eject casings. The cylinder would still look like that, even with all of the shots fired. You'd have to eject the casings manually. Now here's an annoying one from their video for John Wick. Uh, every umbrella at a funeral is black cliché. And this is something they repeat in their video for Justice League Flashpoint Paradox. Now, depicting umbrellas at a funeral being black isn't a cliché. It's an accurate representation of a behaviour that actually happens in reality. And this worries me a little. It makes me think the CinemaSins guys have been turning up to funerals with, like, this. And not understanding that that is generally considered inappropriate. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Now, CinemaSins have previously taken some heat for their assertion that there is no gravity in space, and in their video about the animated Transformers movie, they repeat that mistake, sarcastically saying, this is how gravity works in space, kids, and when the character Unicron drops another character into their mouth. The thing here, though, is that Unicron is the size of a planet, so that's exactly how gravity, quote, works, because if the character has the mass of a planet, then it will attract other objects of mass in the same manner as a planet. CinemaSins seem to think there's some sort of difference, gravitationally speaking, between being, quote, in space, and the inferred opposite state, not in space, whatever that means. Uh, but no, we're in space now, CinemaSins, all the time, as far as gravity is concerned, anyway. The Earth doesn't, like, generate gravity for us, or something. Ugh, these guys need to go and read their Albert Einstein. Kind of Logan to carry Professor X to his bed for some rest, and I'd be calmed by this imagery, if he wasn't also leaving the wheelchair so far away from the bed as to render Charles immobile until further human assistance arrives. So why would Logan leave the chair so far from the bed instead of moving it closer? That's rather mean, isn't it? Uh, anything to say for yourself, movie? Forces, forces. Too bad you're not in that business anymore. They don't want me. They want you. Oh, look at that. He does move it closer. And you can even see it closer to the bed in the CinemaSins video a few sins later. Shameful stuff there. Their video about the movie In Time is quite droll. Uh, the second sin in that video is complaining about how the movie never explains its premise. And the third sin in that video is complaining about the movie over-explaining itself via an expositional monologue that gives away the conceit. Now, the conceit of that movie, by the way, is that people stop aging at 25 and then use remaining lifetime as a currency. So you have poor people with only a few hours on the clock and rich people with hundreds of years. You know, you get it. Now, I mention it here because CinemaSins later give the movie a sin for the characters being motivated by currency. And yes... I'd imagine the ticking death clocks they have in their arms that will kill them when they run out of time would be pretty big motivators, actually. In their video for the movie The Purge, Election Year, uh, CinemaSins are surprised to see somebody stab through a bulletproof vest, and this is a mistake they repeat in their video for The Rock. Uh, now, the thing about bulletproof vests is they're bulletproof. What you'd wear to protect against knives is a stab-proof vest, and they're different things, designed and constructed in different ways for different purposes. Uh, bulletproof vests are built to disperse the kinetic energy of a projectile throughout the material, and aren't really built to stop something sharp and pointed that can pierce through the material. The more you know, hey. In their video for I, Robot, they think that the characters are driving a hover car, and give the movie a sin when they hear the wheels screech on the ground. Um, but it's actually a prototype car with spherical wheels, and uh, not a hover car. 
Their video for the movie Moana is pretty offensive at several points. Uh, CinemaSins' refusal to do any research or look anything up comes off really badly when they're watching a movie based on the mythology and culture of a people that CinemaSins have no idea about. For example, they give the movie a sin for featuring a fish hook constellation which they call fictional, but in reality is an actual Polynesian constellation, uh, better recognised in the West as the tail of the constellation Scorpio. They also give the movie a sin for featuring this thing, uh, which is a Polynesian slit drum, uh, which CinemaSins say looks nothing like a drum. Apparently they were expecting one of these in the ancient cave or something. Watch the following sin from their video about the movie Battle Los Angeles. Ten, burn about 25 minutes, sir. First off, can you be a little more specific? Wouldn't you want to know the exact time left before the rescue helicopter arrives? Also, 10 minutes ago, random marine number four yelled, 25 minutes! 25 minutes! So I'd synchronize those swatches if I were you. Now the mistake CinemaSins made there was that the soldier was actually shouting 25 meters, not 25 minutes, to indicate distance and not time. So that explains that supposed discrepancy there. In their video for Now You See Me Too, they make a rather funny mistake. This is what we've been waiting for. Now it's time to get to work. Since when do the world's best magicians blindly sign up to be basically MacGyver, going after wrongdoers and corporate stooges? Also, why are they all shining their flashlights on these blueprints in this shot, as though flashlight activated blueprints are an actual thing? You see, those aren't flashlights. They're black lights. They're revealing something that was drawn in ink that only shows up under a black light. Uh, there's also this scent from later in the movie. This is my twin brother, Chase. What? The actual f movie? Also, a character has a twin brother or any kind of sibling that they never mentioned before, cliche. So has that character's brother never been mentioned before? Well, about half an hour into the previous movie in that series, uh, this is said. Two TV specials. Glory days. Then your brother slash manager disappeared with all your hard-earned money. <clears throat> did you research, did you? Uh, so, that character's brother was mentioned before. Hardy ha. Uh, similar to this sin is the following one from their video about Home Alone. Why do the McAllisters have a doggy door? There's no mention of a dog or cat throughout this entire movie. Is its sole purpose shooting bad guys in the crotch with BBs? No mention of a dog throughout the entire movie, eh? However, two minutes into the movie, this happens. No, we're not bringing the dog. Put in the kennel for the- Hey, hey, hey! Get off! Kevin, out of the room! Let's do another similar one from the movie Trolls. I'll just get my worthless scullery made to get another place setting ready for the lovely lady... Glitter Sparkles. Crystal only introduced Bridget as his plus one, so the only way Chef could know her name is if the screenwriters were committed to seeing Christine Baranski chew the hell out of this lot. So how did this character know this character's name when they weren't introduced? Well, ten seconds previously in the movie, this happens. Meet the lovely lady Glitter Sparkles. So what happened to their CinemaSins? Was it so hard to find things to criticise about trolls that you had to lie about something that just happened in the movie? I don't know. Hey, Sugar Ray, take the gloves off. Sugar Ray? That's like a 30-year-old boxing reference at this point. Is this movie taking place in the 70s, or is it just a dated boxing reference? Worst thing is, the movie will never answer this question. So what time period is The Nut Job set? Apparently the movie never answers this question. Well, we as viewers can infer the general time period of the movie from several contextual clues. Uh, for example, the opening of the movie shows these old-fashioned cars driving on the roads, and there's uh, this guy wearing suspenders and a flat cap. Uh, there's this 50s mobster-looking guy sitting on a bench. Uh, this newspaper that displays the date as October 21st, 1959. And combined from all these contextual hints, I'm able to estimate the general date that the movie set as October 21st, 1959. The movie will never answer this question, my foot. Uh, CinemaSins were confused there by the Sugar Ray reference, probably mistaking it to mean Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, who was only three years old in 1959 and thus probably not yet a well-known boxer. Uh, more likely, though, the characters were referencing Sugar Ray Robinson, who was a boxer active throughout the 1950s. Uh, some more time period shenanigans now, first from their video about Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, which CinemaSins say takes place in the late 17th century. Uh, the movie is actually set in 1750, which isn't in the 17th century. Just trust me. Um, and I've got no clue where CinemaSins got the late part from. I think that was just a random guess, really. 
In their video for the movie King Arthur, they refer to a medieval battle happening, even though the movie's set during the late Roman occupation of Britain, making medieval an incorrect descriptor there. They also elsewhere refer to England's army, even though England didn't even exist at that point. Uh, watch the following sin from their video about Alice through the looking glass. Dear Hollywood, doctors do not squirt out part of the medicine to f***ing test if a syringe is working. How you ever got started on this trope I will never know, but knock it the f*** off. Rather angry about syringes there. So yes, doctors don't squirt out a bit of the medicine in order to test if the syringe is working, but they do squirt out a bit of the medicine to ensure there are no air bubbles in the syringe. Uh, injecting air into someone can be very dangerous, so what they do is tap the syringe a few times and then squirt a bit out to force any air out of the syringe before use. Uh, isn't learning fun? Uh, watch the following sin from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. You're a legitimate. Mm, yeah, but I always have trouble with your kind, Brits. That's Britsist. Also, Legilimens is someone who can read minds, someone that was never once introduced in the entire world of Harry Potter before now. So this Legilimens thing is something that was never introduced in the entire world of Harry Potter. Uh, well, that's not true, because it's in the books, for a start, uh, but maybe CinemaSins just meant the movies. Um, so has it been mentioned in the movies before? Well, if we watch Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince... Prepare yourself. That's right, Snape says it. Let's take a look at a sin from their video about the movie Central Intelligence. It's 6pm and they're in the Eastern Time Zone, so there's no way there's a football game on unless this bar is showing reruns, because the NFL never plays games that start at 6pm Eastern. Okay, so there's a lot wrong with this. Um, so the NFL never plays games that start at 6pm Eastern. Well, the first problem here is that there's nothing in the movie to indicate that this game has just started. It could be a game that started earlier, and is still playing. Uh, the next problem here is if we do a little zoom and enhance, we can make out the team logo on the field, which is this. Uh, the Tiger Eye logo of the team, the LSU Tigers, which is a college team, and thus wouldn't be playing in an NFL game anyway. So this sin is wrong twice, in two completely different ways. Well done, CinemaSins. In their video for the movie Don't Breathe, they chide a character for urinating at a crime scene for leaving his DNA there. Although actually, urine doesn't contain DNA. That's a fun biology fact for you there. Uh, in their video for Toy Story 3, they spell the character Sid's name wrong and refer to him as a serial killer, uh, not noticing that Sid is actually featured in the movie as a garbage man. Also from this movie is the following sin. Then why did you take it out in the first place? Also, didn't previous movies show us your organs still work, even when not attached? So why not just look through that eye to figure out where it is, man? Yeah, why didn't she just look through the eye to find where it was? That'd be clever, wouldn't it? Oh wait, she does do that. In Blade 2, they incorrectly refer to the mutated vampires as creepers, when they're actually called reapers. In The Ring 2, they think the town the characters move to, Astoria, is in Washington when it's actually in Oregon. In Ghostbusters, they refer to this thing as a bicycle, uh, but it isn't. In Hellboy, they're confused when a character pulls the pins on two grenades, but throws them one at a time, and not understanding how grenades work, I guess. Uh, pulling the pin doesn't actually do anything by itself. The pin is just there to hold the strike lever in place. It's releasing this lever that causes the grenade to explode after a short delay. You can actually put the pin back in a grenade safely, assuming the lever's been held down the whole time. Uh, although I'd advise against trying it. In their video for Unbreakable, they give the movie a sin for having train seats that face backwards as well as forwards. Uh, but I don't know why. Is that an unusual thing in the States? Like, over here, pretty much all the trains are like that. In their video for Suicide Squad, they claim the character Dr. Moon explored a cave featured earlier by herself. But if you watch the movie, you can see someone else with her in that flashback, implying there were other people with her on the trip. Unless that person is just someone she bumped into in passing in the middle of a jungle, which, while possible, would be kind of weird. In the original Planet of the Apes, uh, there's a scene where the apes flush some humans out of a cornfield using sticks. And when CinemaSins watch it, they think the apes are cutting the corn down uh, with blunt sticks. Uh, but of course, they're not. They're just flushing people out. 
I mean, you can obviously see they're not cutting down the corn, so I haven't got a clue what CinemaSins were on about here. In their video for the movie Contact, they mock the appearance of this nebula, uh, but that's actually a real nebula, it's called the Pillars of Creation. They also say that the moon is, quote, nowhere near that size relative to the Earth. Uh, but without a reference for where the camera is located here, uh, that's a silly statement. Uh, after all, if you're very close to the moon, it would appear larger than the Earth. You'd need to know exactly where the camera was located in order to make that judgement. Let's watch a sin from their video about the movie Kung Fu Panda 3. How could you receive a message if no one could find you? Ping calm the f down, I've got this. But yeah, he's right. So let's watch the clip from the movie to give us a little bit more context here. A secret panda village in the mountains. A secret panda- Shh, whoa. But how did you know where I was? I received a message that led me here. How could you receive a message if no one could find you? Sounds suspicious to me. Uh, so okay, how did Poe's biological father get a message telling him where Poe was if he lives in a secret village? Any ideas, movie? Hmm. No, it was, it was a message from the universe. Whoa. Oh, rats. Grown up. <laughs> As I hoped you would when I sent the message to your father. <gasps> you sent the universe mail, whoa! <laughs> yes. Uh, but again, that's a reveal from the end of the movie and CinemaSins couldn't be bothered going back to correct their earlier mistake. Let's watch a sin from their video about the 2017 live action remake of Beauty and the Beast. Since this movie suffers from the exact issue about the castle being in plain sight, I'll just repeat the same sin I gave the last movie. The Beast has only been secretly beasting for 10 years, but Maurice is somehow unaware of this very nearby castle. Also, it's super weird that the villagers wouldn't be at all disturbed that the prince of the very nearby castle hasn't been seen or heard from in years. And even if this prince is habitually reclusive, you'd think that someone would know one of the 300 live-in servants and wonder where they are, right? Right? Uh, no, I wouldn't think that was weird, because I watched the movie. As days bled into years, the prince and his servants were forgotten by the world. For the Enchantress had erased all memory of them from the minds of the people they loved. Now that clip occurs during the opening narration, so how did CinemaSins miss that? Well, check this out. For the Enchantress had erased all memory of them from the minds of the people they loved. That's an excellent attempt to close a plot hole opened by the animated movie, but it leaves me with a whole new set of questions. Yeah, that's right. They gave it a sin. So, what happened here then? You know, at some point between writing this sin and the one from later in the video, CinemaSin somehow forgot the details of the opening narration that they watched. You know, that or these videos are a collaborative effort written by several people who don't talk to each other or something. Uh, let's watch a sin from their video about Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Crime Lord Jabba the Hutt's son has been kidnapped by a rival band of pirates. Excuse me, what? His son? Are you serious? Funny we're only hearing about this guy just now. Anyone who can help us find his kidnapped son. This warlord reaches out to the federal government to help him find his captured son, instead of simply taking matters into his own hands and sending a bunch of bounty hunters to do it. So why didn't Jabba the Hutt hire some bounty hunters to find his son? That seems like the sort of thing he'd do, right? Uh, well, 15 minutes into the movie, this happens. Yes, Commander? We've discovered that Jabba the Hutt has also hired bounty hunters to track down his son. It turns out Jabba did hire some bounty hunters, CinemaSins just lied about it. In their video for the movie Sing, they wonder if the shrimp act need a handler to push their tank around, uh, but later when they're dismissed from the show, uh, we see that they do in fact have a handler with them. In their video for Star Trek Beyond, they give the movie a sin because the alien planet has air that humans can breathe. What a coincidence, eh? Uh, what they missed was this scene, 18 minutes into the movie. Approaching ultimate. Class M planet. Now an M class planet there is the Star Trek universe's designation for a planet suitable for human life. And now you might say, well, that's still an unlikely narrative convenience, isn't it? Even if they did establish it earlier in the story. And you would nearly be right, except for the fact that the antagonist is later revealed to actually be a human Starfleet captain played by Idris Elba who crash landed on that planet long ago and thus the planet would have to be able to support human life or he would have died when he crashed and none of the events of the film would have taken place. So there. Now do you want to see possibly the worst cinema sin I have ever encountered? Uh, this really gets me. 
this one uh, from their video about the movie Too Fast, Too Furious. If Slapjack is only going over 100, then seconds later Brian hits the NOS and is blasting past 160, how is Slapjack not eating Brian's dust? Right. So, this is... annoying. So, the characters Slapjack and Brian are engaged in some sort of illegal street race. And though both cars appear to be going at a similar speed, uh, when we see close-ups of their speedometers, we see that Brian is doing 160, whereas Slapjack is doing about 100. Uh, what a silly movie mistake, you might think, if you were some sort of utter buffoon who had never seen a car. You see, Brian's speedometer is in kilometers per hour. That's why it says 160. Slapjack's speedometer, on the other hand, is primarily in miles per hour, so it shows him doing 100. But what are these other smaller numbers in red on the inside there? Well, that's the speed of Slapjack's car in kilometers per hour. And would you look at that? He's doing about 160, which is how fast Brian is going, and that's why the cars appear to be going the same goddamn speed. <sighs> CinemaSins don't seem to have much of a clue when it comes to cars. Uh, in their video for the movie Jason Bourne, they incorrectly identify this Dodge Charger as a Dodge Challenger. Um, and in their video for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, they jokingly expect this SRT to turn into Bumblebee. Except, of course, we all know that Bumblebee is a Camaro. Uh, let's take a look at a sin from their video about the movie Angry Birds. The movie has mime birds because it's super funny and you just didn't realize it. Eyebrows! The f is going on here? Is he in school? And if so, why is he hireable as a clown? Why is he painting? Why was there a mime hanging out a second ago? Where the f is this village? This is the one time I'd welcome a little f***ing narration. So, what's going on here then? Well, this section of the movie is actually a montage of various scenes from the main character's life showing situations in which he's been angry, I guess. And this particular scene is a flashback to his time in school. I mean, here's how he looked just five seconds ago, and then it cuts to him in school, and he looks like this, a little kid version of himself. And I guess the filmmakers trusted in the ability of their audience to recognise a series of flashbacks and not try to interpret it as a linear narrative in which the character rapidly changes age, appearance and location. But I guess they didn't account for the CinemaSins guys, who need to be led by the hand through absolutely everything. Let's watch the first few sins from their video about the movie Warcraft. There has been a war between orcs and humans for as long as can be remembered. Or as long as it's been since Tolkien created the orcs were blatantly stealing for this game movie. Also narration. But there was once a time when we did not even know who our enemy was. Wait, you just said you've been fighting with humans as long as you can remember. So how do you remember the time before that when you didn't even know your enemy? But in the beginning, how could we have known? Known what? You've given me three statements so far. Two about knowing and one about wondering how you could have known and already I think I see the problem with this movie. Okay, so there's a few problems here. Firstly, the orc voiceover says, We've been fighting humans as long as we can remember, but there was once a time when we did not know who our enemy was. Now, that's not actually a contradiction. Knowledge of the existence of a time before your memory begins does not mean you personally remember it, just that you know about it. For example, I have knowledge of the existence of ancient Rome, but that doesn't mean I personally remember it, does it? Uh, secondly here, where CinemaSins say, known what, you've given me three statements so far, etc., uh, that's not true. CinemaSins cut a line out of the opening narration here. Let's have a listen. But there was once a time when we did not even know who our enemy was. Or what that evil green magic befell had done to us. So the following line, but in the beginning, how could we have known, is referring to this previous line about what the green fell magic did to them. CinemaSins just cut that line out to make the narration seem worse than it actually is. I mean, it's still pretty bad, so I don't know why CinemaSins bothered to misrepresent it really, uh, but they did. In the Lego movie, they point out this Lego bike and say the minifigures couldn't ride it because it only has one stud at the back. Uh, but actually, they can ride those. Uh, they stand over the middle. Uh, that's not a seat back there, that's just the rear wheel guard. In Die Hard 2, there's the following sin. But recalibrate sea level. Recalibrate sea level? 
Don't the planes have independent meters and gauges that are not reliant upon control towers to determine how far they are up in the air? Uh, no, actually. One of the purposes of the control tower is to transmit to the planes a code based on atmospheric pressure uh, that the planes need to calculate their altitude above sea level. Not all planes can do that independently. Here's a fun one. Next, uh, do you know how CinemaSins like to do this? In case you're confused it for Pruskow, Kentucky. You know, hardy ha, we obviously know the country. Who would need to be told what country we were in? You know, certainly not us at CinemaSins. Uh, well, that sin there is from their video about X-Men Apocalypse. And now here's a sin from later in the video. Because someone decided to wake up Apocalypse right now, an earthquake in Egypt was felt all the way to Germany. They think they're in Germany. Even with the word Poland appearing on the screen in the movie, they still got the country wrong. They also think that Andalusia is a city in Spain instead of a region in Spain, and they confuse Goa, India, with the non-existent Gao, India. Uh, so we'll just add geography to the list of things CinemaSins doesn't understand, alongside animals, history, cars, guns, movies, and whatever else. Oh, this video's getting on a bit, isn't it? Uh, let's double time a few minor errors here. Um, uh, in Peach Dragon, they type 3 minutes and 15 minutes instead of 3 minutes and 15 seconds. They here type Sprit instead of Spirit. They forget the space between in and 15 in the title of their video for the boss baby. They leave out the word two in this sentence from their The Mummy Returns video. Everything wrong with Deadpool in 16 minutes. Everything wrong with Deadpool in 15 minutes. In The Secret Life of Pets, they use the wrong ending template for the video, the one from their Music Sins channel, a mistake they repeat several times in other videos before correcting it. I mean, I could keep going. This video contains just a portion of the mistakes I found watching through CinemaSins offerings from the past year. I've got 10 A4 pages filled with this. Both sides. This video could have been three times as long easily, but I think I should probably arbitrarily stop here. So what have we learned today? Well, nothing new. The CinemaSin still hasn't improved at all. If anything, they've gotten worse. And they're still incapable of following along with even the simplest stories unless they're held by the hand the whole time with on-screen text and narration, which they'll then complain about anyway and then probably forget. They'll still lie about and misrepresent the content of movies in order to provide their audience with an unearned, smug feeling of superiority over something. And they still don't know anything at all about anything. And worst of all, they're not funny. Uh, the CinemaSins YouTube channel is probably the only human creation to which I would deny the title art. Thanks a lot for watching, everyone. If you'd like to see more videos like this, well, don't support me on, on Patreon. I'm not going to be making more videos like this. I mean, once a year, max. Every CinemaSins video is a Gordian knot of wrongness, and untangling it costs a part of your soul. Uh, thanks to all my patrons anyway. I mean, I couldn't continue to do this without them, so I should probably be blaming them here rather than thanking them thinking about it. Uh, how dare you support me? Honestly, I take it as an insult that I'm supported in this. Uh, anyway, uh, see you next year, I guess, and we'll look at everything they got wrong between now and then. Bye.